What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D video. So, I know what you're saying, you're looking at that title and you're going, what? Ursa Luna is bad? Well, I'll be honest, I don't think it's actually bad. Um, I'm going to be getting into why Ursa Luna is currently underperforming, and why I think that it's, it's mostly an issue with innovation and like... Just people tunnel visioning, uh, tunnel visioning into like one set that is pretty easy to play around. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this gameplay and time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Answer my comment question of the day, which is going to be, what do you think Ursa Luna needs to do to rise in, uh, not in usage because it's getting used a lot, but like rise in, uh, in successes and like in top cut, uh, in, in like top cuts, you know. But yeah. So, uh, first thing I want to do is talk about what set is being ran on Ursaluna and why it isn't really working and what is keeping it from working. So, let's get into that. Let me explain Ursaluna. So, Ursaluna has effectively pseudo legendary stats. You know, 130 HP, 140 attack, 105 defense, 80 special defense. And the only two stats keeping it from having that 600 BST, because it's 50 off, that 600 BST. To make it a pseudo legendary are its special attack and its speed if you were to put you know yeah what is it it's 50 points off if you were to put you know 40 points in the special attack give it 85 and then 10 points in speed it would actually make it worse ironically enough so that pseudo legendary thing no nah, it's 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 a load of garbage right anyways so it has the ability guts and it has access to uh, stab Earthquake, Headlong Rush, and Facade. When you have Guts and Stab Facade, you're bound to be pretty good. If we look at all the Guts Facade Pokemon in the game that are normal type, there aren't that many. There's Squawk Ability, which has low attack. There's Ursaring, which has pretty high attack. And if we go to, what well, I think if we go to like National Dex, let's look at all like the National Dex Pokemon. Like, the reason this combination hasn't really been used is because they have low base stats, right? So, Guts, Normal, Facade. Yeah, so like, 81 attack, 90 attack, 85 attack. They have been too scared to give us a Pokemon that's good with this combination of things. Up, up until now, where they were like, yeah, Ursa Luna, 140 attack, 130 HP, 105 defense, 80 special defense, give it a Trick Room uh, speed tier. Yeah, no, let's just do that. So, the reason that Flame Orb Guts is actually a really solid set is because um, the Flame Orb does two things. It's going to activate your Guts, but it's also going to make you to... It's going to make you immune to Spore, which is pretty important. When you're a Trick Room Pokemon with Guts and you don't have to worry about Spore, that's actually really big, especially when you're not as slow as Amoongus, which hits uh, 30 base speed. Uh, it's going to be pretty frustrating for you. So... Ursa Luna, with this combination of traits, is able to one-shot basically anything it wants. There are very few Pokemon that can eat a hit from it unresisted. So if we were to take a look at just standard Ursa Luna, Trick Room Guts, right? And put it up versus, let's go with like an Urshifu. Mystic Water Urshifu. That facade, Unterrid, is going to one-shot the Urshifu. Let's say you're Terastalized. That is almost enough to one-shot the Urshifu two times over. Let's say you're facing a Cresselia. You have a roll to one shot with Terra Normal Guts Facade. Let's say you're facing an Amoongus. Without Terrastalization, it's a roll to one shot this Amoongus. And if they want to go like, you know, 252, 252, then they only have, well, they have a 0% chance of living this hit. It is a very strong Pokemon. It is very hard to switch into. So why isn't it seeing results? If we look at the last Beanie Brawl, um, actually, there might have been one more after this. Let me actually check real quick. Hold on. Let me check to see if there's even more recent stats. Okay, there was one more Beanie Brawl, but it was Reg C, so it doesn't matter. This is the most recent Beanie Brawl, which has uh, typically some of the highest uh, participation um, and is just like a, a very, very good place to test your team. If we look at how many Ursa Luna are just in, let's go top 16, right? Let's start from 16th. No Ursa Luna, no Ursa Luna, no Ursa Luna, no Ursa Luna, no Ursa Luna. There is one Ursa Luna at 7th place, used by SNAF, but with Nurse Luna, it's more like FNAF. Um, this thing is actually running the standard set. It's going to be Flame Orb, Guts, Facade, Earthquake, Protect, Crunch, right? 
What you'll notice is that where this Ursaluna succeeds, where others have failed, is that this is not a hard Trick Room team. There are a lot of Ursaluna teams focusing on that hard Trick Room aspect. They'll throw Cresselia, Iron Hands, uh, and Ursaluna all on like one team, put like an Amoongus on it, and then they're going to just go for the Trick Room setup and just hope that they don't lose. Uh, the reason this team, I think, succeeds with this standard set is because it's not focused around the Trick Room aspect. As you can see, it's actually just a hyper offense team. Fluttermane, Regieleki, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Cobra Cloak, Tornadus. They go for Rain Dance. You go for Terra Water, Surging Strikes with, you know, just Urshifu and you one shot whatever you need to. You get that early KO and then like you're, you just plow through the team. The Ursaluna mode is very soft. It is not the main aspect of the team. If your opponent wants to prepare for this hyper offense aspect and they want to go for like a fake out user, uh, like let's say they want to lead off with like, I don't know. Uh, let's go like Rillaboom or Iron Hands. They want to go for like Rillaboom uh, and just try to shut down the Trick Room that, or try to shut down the Tailwind that way. But you know, they recover cloaks. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and Or maybe they, they want to fake out the, the Urshifu or whatever. Like the way that you prepare for beating Tailwind Hyper Offense is pretty different from the way that you prepare from beating this specific mode of Trick Room. You can see it's Terra Ghost on the Ursaluna, meaning that, you know, it can't get faked out turn one. Um, you can see that there's, and it's also Terra Ghost, not Terra Normal, so it loses the fighting weakness, which is a big part of it, um, also the, the water weakness, um, and you see, like, the Ndidi also has, like, Psychic Seeds, uh, Psychic Surge, so nothing get faked out anyways, they go for the Trick Room, the Ursaluna goes for, like, the turn one facade, next turn the Ndidi's gonna be able to go for, like, Heal Pulse, keep it healthy, you can just keep hitting things, right? Also, the Ndidi having Psychic Terrain means that you're able to click the Earthquake, even when Rillaboom exists, because if Rillaboom exists, your Earthquake isn't doing anything because the damage is halved by Grassy Terrain. Being able to switch in and out the Ndidi to set up that Psychic Terrain is going to allow for you to beat Rillaboom teams more effectively. This team circumvents a lot of the issues that Ursaluna has. Ursaluna is so strong that everything has been prepared for it since day one. Let's look at all the things that just make Ursaluna just a, a very big struggle Pokemon and why I think that it, it comes down to players just building too heavy into the Ursaluna mode and also really, really like they're really into just using an offensive Terra where Ursaluna, I would argue, 100% needs a defensive Terra and you don't have to go Flame Orb. So I have a, an alternative set that I think is fun. So yeah, Amoongus is actually able to deal with the Ursaluna okay-ish. Um, they tend to run like Rocky Helmet right now, so all you really need to do to beat an Ursaluna is redirect away one hit, make sure your other Pokemon doesn't drop to an Earthquake, and then you just attack them with that Pokemon. Because it's taking consistent damage from Flame Orb, from, you know, because it wants that Guts boost, you can actually, like, Protect Stall and also HP Stall, um, was it? You can Protect Stall Trick Room and also HP Stall on Ursaluna, like, at the same time. Like, that's a big thing, Ursaluna is on a consistent timer unless it's paired with a healing Pokemon, like Lunar Blessing Cresselia. Uh, and Amoongus being able to, you know, make sure it takes that Rocky Helmet damage as well as allowing its opponent to hit means that Ursaluna doesn't survive more than like two or three turns um, if it's not picking up KOs. Urshifu Rabbit Strike and Urshifu Single Strike are also big issues with the Ursaluna uh, Trick Room teams. Uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu is able to hit through Protect, and because so many Ursalunas are saying, oh no, I don't need a defensive Terra, I want to click Terra Normal Facade, they're losing to Urshifu literally 100% of the time because they have to sack something. A lot of Urshifu are running like the Scarf, the Band, the Mystic Water sets, or even the Sash, which makes it even harder for Ursaluna to beat it. But because you need to protect to, uh, turn one to activate Trick Room and your Facade, uh, and your... Um, your flame orb for your facade. This means that the Urshifu is just going to hit you during your protect. Unseen Fist means that they can just close combat you. And a lot of them are either Terra Ground or Terra Normal. If you're Terra Ground, they're gonna Surging Strikes you because you have no defensive tower, uh, no defensive counterplay. If you're Terra Normal, they're just gonna close combat you. And that means this one's also gonna close combat you. And this one really likes running the Choice Band. So not only does it have the option of one-shotting you, but it can also one-shot the Cresselia. Um, or one-shotting the, the Ursaluna, but it can also one-shot the Cresselius. Like, that's a big issue with it. Landers is also seeing really high play right now. Um, whether it's, like, the Therian or the Incarnate, it's able to deal with Ursaluna pretty well in the same way that, like, it puts on too much pressure for Ursaluna to really be able to get going. 
Uh, Lander's Therian, in fact, is also like defensive enough where after an Intimidate, if you're facing like, you know, let's go with this, just bulky-ish Lander's Therian 244, right? It gets the Intimidate off of you, which is going to basically deactivate your Guts boost. That means that even Terra Normal Facade isn't always going to KO like the bulkier ones. Like they can invest pretty heavily into defense, which a lot of them are right now to deal with um, Urshu Single Strike or Urshu Rapid Strike. But if you're not Terra Normal, that means that your facade is still not one-shotting, allowing them to go for like an Earthquake or like a, a Terra Blast into you. You know, if they're Terra Flying, that Terra Blast is actually going to do a decent amount, and then you're still taking that Flame Orb chip. So yeah, Rillaboom is also really bad for Ursaluna. It likes clicking Earthquake more than it likes clicking Headlong Rush. Headlong Rush is like a nuke move, and Earthquake with the Guts Facade and Terra Ground is also a nuke move. But because this Pokemon has, has access to Fake Out, U-Turn, wood hammer for like huge pressure and then also just really any other move it wants if it, if, it, if it knocks you off turn one like if you want to go for like a read and it knocks off your um your flame orb it's it's just done you're not doing anything to it uh but yeah also the grassy surge while it will you know offset the flame orb damage for the ursaluna uh it's also going to allow the rillaboom to heal up pretty well and rillaboom's got really good bulk 100 hp it usually runs max hp it can invest a pretty decent amount of defense and still get what still get done what it wants to get done it's going to be living for a long time so yeah the one shot capability the fake out to stop trick room turns the grassy surge preventing earthquake from beating everything is just really bad for it iron hands is also pretty rough for the ursaluna because if it's a minimum speed iron hands that means that ursaluna under trick room will have to probably eat a close combat especially if they're running standard terra grass because iron hands is not a frail pokemon it is one of the bulkiest pokemon on the physical side that we have in this game if you look at like the terra grass assault vest set that facade that facade is doing a lot you have to terra to one shot it though and even then there's a chance that like not you know high defense investment ones live so then you have to eat like a close combat and close combat is a one shot versus most ursa luna so that is very bad for you yeah also it has fake out fake out volt switch they can pivot pretty well like they're not really concerned so yeah iron hands is also a huge issue for it all these pokemon sort of coalesce into a metagame that's very hostile for ursaluna it makes it very difficult for it to get anything done especially the urshifus so my proposal is stop always running flame orb guts and leaning really heavy into trick room it's not that hard there's like a million other sets that ursaluna can run well this is a an example spread that i've been running i hit 1600s on an alt account with this one um but i basically just paired it with cresselia and it's belly drum earthquake crunch protect right so you have citrus berry and it's not terra ground it's actually supposed to be terra grass with terra grass you're able to fix a lot of issues that ursaluna has you lose that fighting weakness like i said this person also went with a defensive terra you lose that fighting weakness you lose that grass or you lose that uh grass weakness you lose that water weakness and you're just gonna resist those hits now so you don't really care it's super bulky and it plays like a 2018 Snorlax. Those of you saying, why would you only have 20 attack investment? It's a belly drum user. Snorlax in like 2018 almost never ran a lot of attack. Like it was pretty much just like a little bit of attack. You pick up, you invest enough attack to KO things at minus five. Because with belly drum and this high attack stat, you're, you're just doing too much. Actually, let's take a look at Snorlax. Let's take a look at Snorlax. So, okay, yeah. So 178 attack, max attack Snorlax is still weaker than 20 attack Ursaluna. So just to let you know, Snorlax picked up KOs without max attack. It would run almost no attack and belly drum up and KO things. Ursaluna has, you know, significantly more attack and significantly better physical bulk and pretty good special bulk. It can belly drum up. If you pair it with like an Amoongus and you like side pollen puff, you get back up to full. If you pair it with a Cresselia and you belly drum, eat your Citrus Berry and Lunar Blessing, you're back up to full. Then you helping hand your Earthquakes. You don't need Facade for this thing to work well, in my opinion. You don't even need like normal stab. I think that people are so tunnel visioned into that set that they just don't know that Ursuna has other ways of running. I do think Guts is still the best ability. Guts is a phenomenal ability because it makes it so... If you get poisoned, if you get burned, 
you don't have to deal with any of like the really you don't have to deal with the negative repercussions of burn other than that chip damage right um and burn is one of the few ways ursula can get shut down if it like burn is one of the few ways ursula can get shut down if it's like you know not running guts so just getting rid of that option is pretty big just don't allow yourself to be in that situation but it, it also gets other abilities right it also gets other abilities bulletproof makes you immune to like shadow ball if you want to go like terra ghost i'm pretty sure i forget what moves are like blocked by bulletproof but there's a good amount of them that are like fairly useful sludge bomb i don't think you care too much about but yeah unnerve also makes it so your opponents can't eat their berries so the you know citrus berry on amoongus is no longer an issue uh you can even like earthquake into heatran and now their shooka berry isn't going to save them my diagnosis of the situation is get better at building ursaluna um i i think a lot of people have written it off right the reason i made this video is because a lot of people have written it off they said ursaluna is actually a bad pokemon it's not going to work because a lot of people just are you know prepared for it but they're not prepared for it in the way that it's bad they're prepared for it in the way that they have options and when you lean so heavily into this trick room mode that a lot of people are it's it's not going to work out like let me see so yeah, this is what I mean. This is a hard Trick Room Ursaluna team. You know, they didn't do terrible. They didn't do terrible, but they didn't top cut. Same with this one. Another hard Trick Room Ursaluna team didn't do terrible, but they didn't top cut. Like you'll see that the Ursaluna teams that didn't top cut were all hard Trick Room. I would argue that the issue has more to do with hard Trick Room than the Ursaluna itself. Oh my God, wait, no, I'm literally right about this. All of these are, are all of these are hard Trick Room Ursalunas, except this one. This one's like soft Trick Room. One out of a lot of them. Here we go. Here's another hard trick room or Saluna. Or not really. This one's a little bit more balanced, but you get my point. You, you kind of see what I'm what I'm saying here. Like people are too invested into this one way of running it that if you just adapt to the meta game, run a defensive Terra type, it's still one of the greatest Pokemon in the format. And yeah, I've been running it. It's been doing pretty well for me. I'm probably gonna use it in a tournament soon. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed my little. Is this like an op-ed? Is an op-ed like an opinion piece? Yeah, this is my little op-ed. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.